praise the Lord everyone. I give honour to the Holy Spirit of God, to our Bishop Andrew Landell, Lady Coronet Landell, Minister Campbell, brethren, friends, and to everyone that's watching. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for joining us for Sunday School today. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we magnify your name. We give you thanks, Lord, for who you are and for all that you've done for us. Thank you for keeping us throughout the course of the week. Thank you for providing for us and for sustaining us. Father, as we gather together in Sunday school once more, we pray, Lord, that you'll open our hearts, you'll open our understanding, that as we hear the dropping of your word, we can put it into practice in our lives. Lord, we pray that it will bring forth much fruit. Bless us now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Today, we're on lesson 3.4 and the topic of the lesson is help to understand God's call. The lesson text is 1 Samuel 10 verses 1 to 24. Our focus verses are 1 Samuel 10 verses 6 to 7 and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. And let it be, when these signs are come upon thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. Praise the Lord. The truth about God is, God will speak into our lives and provide confirmation. The truth for my life and yours is I will counsel with godly leaders to help me to understand God's call. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Samuel was named after the principal character of the book. First and second Samuel were originally one book. First Samuel covers nearly one century of Israel's history, from Samuel's birth to Saul's death, and it's from 1105 BC to 1010 BC. It forms the main historical link between the time of Judges and the time of Israel's kings, whereas 2 Samuel deals solely with David. 1 Samuel deals with three major transitions in Israel's national leadership, from Eli to Samuel, from Samuel to Saul, and from Saul to David. Our lesson objectives today are, firstly, to explore the events which led to Saul's call to lead God's people. Secondly, to understand the prophet Samuel's role in Saul's transition from an ordinary citizen to Israel's first king. Let's look at the topic of the lesson. Help to understand God's call. As you know, God calls people from all walks of life. He chooses to work through whosoever he pleases for his purpose so that he, God, will get the glory. In the book of 1 Samuel, we read how God called the prophet Samuel when he was just a child. We also read how God chose Saul to be king of Israel. 
neither of these individuals knew what God had in store for them. Their stories show us just how important it is to have godly ministers, leaders and spiritual advisors to help us to make sense of God's call. You may remember that the young Samuel relied on Eli's wisdom to help him to understand that God was calling him to be a prophet. Samuel had no idea that God was calling him, but Eli instructed him to answer God's call, saying, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. When Samuel presented himself, God called him to be a prophet. 1 Samuel 3 verses 1 to 14 As we shall see in due course, God used Samuel to support Saul, who was initially reluctant to accept the mantle of king. Before we go any further, Let's look closely at the prophet Samuel, who helped Saul to understand God's call on his life. When we examine Samuel's story, we will see how Samuel was equipped to mentor Saul. Samuel was in fact the last of the judges and first in a line of prophets. Acts 3.24 confirms this when it speaks of all the prophets from Samuel and those that followed after. Praise the Lord. Samuel was born to Elkanah, the son of Jeroam, an Ephrathite, and Anna. 1 Samuel 1.1 1, 1. The scripture tells us that Elkanah had two wives. The name of the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah was barren. We remember how Hannah wept and prayed for a child. 1 Samuel 1 11 tells us, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaiden and remember me, and not forget thine handmaiden, but will give unto thine handmaiden a male child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Samuel was dedicated to God at birth. He was taken to the tabernacle and raised by Eli the priest. In 1 Samuel 1, 27 to 28, Hannah told Eli the priest, For this child I prayed, and the Lord gave me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord, as long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. Praise the Lord. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Chapter 3 verse 1. At a young age Samuel was called by God to his special ministry. 1 Samuel 19 20. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Dan was the northernmost part of Israel and Beersheba, the southernmost part. 
The scripture is telling us that Samuel's prophetic gifts were well known throughout Israel, from the very top right down to the bottom. Praise the Lord. Let's summarize the situation as it existed so far. The children of Israel wanted a king to rule over them, like the nations around them. The prophet Samuel was old and he made his sons, Joel and Abiah, judges in Beersheba. Unfortunately, they were not like their father. 1 Samuel 8.3 tells us that his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after Luca and took bribes and perverted judgment. The elders of Israel went to Samuel at Ramah and asked for a king to judge them like all the nations. 1 Samuel 8 verse 5. This was not a rejection of Samuel. It was a rejection of God because God was their king. His form of government was a theocracy. Theocracy simply means ruled by God. God instructed Samuel to protest and show the people what having a king over them would be like. 1 Samuel 8, 9 to 18. But they were adamant. They said, Nay, but we will have a king over us that we may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. 1 Samuel 8 verses 19 to 20. How ungrateful these people were when you consider all that God had done for them. As children of God, it is important that we are not too attached to the ways of the world. In 1 John 2, 15 to 16, the Apostle John instructs us, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Praise the Lord. God told Samuel, listen to the voice of the people and make them a king. 1 Samuel 8, 22. It's important to understand that in ancient Israel, the first kings were chosen by God himself. But in the case of both Saul and David, Samuel was charged with anointing them. Saul found himself in a position that he did not expect. He had only gone out to look for his father's donkeys and his life was completely transformed. When God has his mark on you, he knows how to get your attention. Praise the Lord. So, who was Saul and what do we know about him? Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. He was the son of Kish, who himself was a mighty man of power. 1 Samuel 9 verse 1, meaning Kish was influential and wealthy. Saul was a physically impressive man. He stood a head taller than everyone else in Israel and he was handsome. 1 Samuel 9 verse 2. He was a natural choice to be the new king, one 
that the people could really support. When his father's donkeys went astray, Saul and a servant were sent to look for them. The two men were unaware that God was directing their path. When they were unsuccessful in their search, the servant suggested that they should go to the prophet Samuel and seek his advice. This was a setup. God had already chosen Saul and made known his plan to the prophet Samuel. Praise the Lord. Samuel was in a town, presumably Rama, to offer a sacrifice. The Lord had revealed to Samuel the previous day that a man was coming who was to be anointed king. 1 Samuel 9 verses 15 to 17. When Saul arrived, he was invited to a sacrifice and feast with Samuel at the high place, 1 Samuel 9, 19, and he was honoured by the prophet. So what do we mean by the high places? Places of sacrifice and worship were often located on hills. This was true of both pagan shrines and of the altars that were dedicated to the true and living God. Samuel and Saul left the place of sacrifice and went on top of Samuel's house where they continued their conversation. We have no way of knowing what they talked about. What we do know is that earlier Saul had expressed reluctance to be any kind of leader in Israel. 1 Samuel 9, 20 to 21. The next day, Samuel prepared to send Saul on his way. This was at the spring of the day, verse 26, meaning the early morning. Let's get into the scripture lesson text. I'm reading from 1 Samuel 10, verse 1. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? It's important to notice that Samuel took Saul away privately and anointed him to be king. It wasn't the right time to present him to the nation of Israel. Why not? Because God was still working on him. Samuel reminded Saul that Israel belonged to the Lord, that they were his inheritance. Because God had placed Saul as commander of his inheritance, he was directly responsible to God for how he treated God's people. The people weren't his, they belonged to the Lord. Samuel revealed to Saul several signs that would confirm his calling. These signs are found in 1 Samuel 10 verses 2 to 6. Firstly, Samuel told Saul, when you leave me, you will see two men beside Rachel's tomb at Zelza in the land of Benjamin. They will tell you that the donkeys have been found and that your father is worried about you and he's asking, how am I going to find my son? Secondly, he told him, and when you get to the Ark of Tabor, you will see three men coming towards you. You were on their way to worship God at the altar of Bethel. One will be bringing three young goats. Another will have three loaves of bread and the third will have a bottle of wine. 
and they'll greet you and offer you two of the loaves which you are to accept. Finally, he told him, After this, you will come to Gibeath Elohim, also known as God's Hill, where the garrison of Philistines is. As you arrive there, you will meet a band of prophets coming down the hill, playing a psaltery, a timbrel, a flute and a harp, and prophesying as they come. At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come mightily upon you, and you'll prophesy with them, and you will feel and act like a different person. Each of these signs came to pass. They happened just as the prophet Samuel had said. This served to confirm to Saul that Samuel's message was definitely from God and that God had truly called him, that is, Saul, to be king of Israel. It's important to understand that God always confirms his anointing. Let's look more closely at our focus verses. 1 Samuel 10 verses 6 to 7. I'm reading them in the Amplified Version. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily and you will prophesy with them and you will be changed into another man. When these signs come upon you, do for yourself whatever the situation requires, for God is with you. This was the highest assurance of them all. When the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, Saul would realise that Samuel had anointed him by God's authority. It's important to understand that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would rest upon an individual to empower them to carry out a specific office or task. The anointing which Saul received transformed him into a different person. It equipped him to stand in the office of king. He received power from the Lord to carry out his duties as king. Praise the Lord. Before his encounter with the prophets, there was no evidence that Saul was a religious man. But when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he prophesied with the prophets. This was something that he had never done before. And as the prophet also instructed him, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, whatever you feel to do, do it, be led by the Spirit of the Lord, because God is with you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, how did the people react to the change in Saul? And it happened when all who knew him formerly saw that he indeed prophesied among the prophets. That the people said to one another, What is this? that has come upon the son of Kish. Is Saul among the prophets? 1 Samuel 10 verse 11 Like Saul, we need to allow the Spirit of God to move in our lives, to make us who we are truly meant to be according to God's divine plan. We must allow the Holy Spirit to change us from the inside out. Praise the Lord. The New Testament speaks of putting off the old nature through baptism. Romans 6. Baptism by water and baptism of the Holy Spirit helps us to take on a godly nature. Galatians 3.27 reminds us, 
for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Praise the Lord. Whenever we read of individuals being called in the Bible, we often see how reluctant they were to take up the task. Moses told the Lord that he had difficulty in speaking. Exodus 4.10 Isaiah wondered how he would declare the word of God as a man of unclean lips, dwelling among a people of unclean lips. Isaiah 6 verse 5 Jeremiah said that he was just a child. He felt like his youth disqualified him. Jeremiah 1 verse 6 Saul expressed a similar reluctance when God called him. Samuel privately anointed Saul earlier but Saul later had a public coronation as the Lord demonstrated to the people that Saul would be king. 1 Samuel 10, 17 to 21. Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come before the Lord. The tribe of Benjamin was chosen. When he caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the families of Matri were chosen and Saul, the son of Kish, was chosen. When they sought him, he could not be found because he was hiding among the baggage. 1 Samuel 10, 22. Ironically, the man who looked like a king because of his build and his outward appearance was trying to hide from the people. 1 Samuel 10, 23 to 24 concludes and they ran and fetched him thence and when he stood among the people he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upwards and Samuel said to all the people see ye him whom the Lord has chosen that there is none like him among all the people and all the people shouted and said God save the king. We may feel inadequate like Saul, Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah and many others. It's good to be humble when it comes to being called of God. 1 Peter 5 6 instructs us, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humility is a necessity in the kingdom of God. Humble people focus on advancing God's kingdom and not their own ends. If we have humility that manifests itself in reluctance to answer the call. We are not alone. It's important to understand that Saul, Moses, Isaiah and Jeremiah all overcame their inadequacies and depended on the Lord. Like them, we shouldn't ignore the call. Instead, we should seek help from those in ministry who can help us to understand our call. Praise the Lord. When I look into my own life, the late elder and evangelist Landell helped me to develop in my Christian walk and provided numerous opportunities for me to minister to others and to take on different roles within the church. My own mother, missionary 
Gloria Fletcher, was always there to give encouragement during the times that I felt inadequate or just overwhelmed. She gave me Jeremiah 1 verses 7 to 8, which reads, But the Lord said unto me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. We all need men and women of God who can advise us, pray with us and help us to follow God's plan. They are good people to talk to because they've already walked the path of humility and exaltation. They know what we are going through because They've been there themselves. Thank you for joining me for Sunday School today. I hope that you've learned something from it. Looking forward to next week, the topic is Authority to Forgive. The lesson text is Mark 2 verses 1 to 12, Acts 5, 29 to 32. The focus verse is Mark 2, verse 10. Brethren and friends, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you and continue to cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Have a blessed week.